A little boy is tasked with a seemingly harmless and easy chore of passing his mother's leftovers to his apartment complex neighbors. Each neighbor is more mysterious and twisted than the other, putting the boy in harm's way, exposing him to their inner demons with a much more grim revelation awaiting the poor innocent boy, someone whose little mind cannot bear to witness such harsh realities. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to this really really over the top story with so many horrible things accumulated in one single building. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers as always, and with that said, let's begin. The protagonist being a child left in the house alone with the mother who is cooking food, she asks him to go to the kitchen and help her. She mentions that she has made a lot of food, too much for just the two of them to eat, asking him to take the leftovers to the neighbors in the apartment complex. She finishes her demands by encouraging the boy and telling him to be someone taking care of her, unlike his father who didn't, which portrays what an unsteady and rocky relationship the parents had, with the mother sharing her own personal problems with the innocent little boy and involving him in an unsuccessful marriage that he has nothing to do with just unlucky enough to be the result of one. Despite the remarks she made, the mother seems to be generally kind and soft-spoken, calling the boy with endearing words. Picking up the boxed leftovers, the mother mentions despite what she told him not to talk to strangers, now it's a little different and it's okay to do so passing the leftovers around. The boy being told not to go back until he has given all of the leftovers to the neighbors, he starts by knocking on the first door with a kind elderly lady opening the door. Passing the leftover to this lady, she appreciates it and instructs the boy to give her thanks to both her father and mother, despite no sign of her father being seen anywhere in the house, even though it's late at night. Going to the 8th floor, a level lower, he knocks on the first door with a neighbor looking like a monster. The girl asks the boy if she has to pay for the food, to which he can respond with yes or no. If the boy says no, the girl calls him an idiot and laughs in his face while shutting the door, revealing her evil character, glorifying taking advantage of people and getting away with it, rather than noticing the kindness and actually appreciating it. She's probably the kind who perceives kind people to be weak and tries her luck in taking advantage of them, or vulnerable people such as kids. On the flip side, if the boy asks for money, the girl becomes annoyed and instead of paying, she throws a cockroach at him while laughing and shutting the door. So either way, this girl shows her true twisted nature. If you thought it's bad already, wait until you see the other neighbors the boy is forced to encounter. Knocking on the door opposite, it's opened by an unapproachable, unpleasant man who at first acts disgusted by the leftover offered to him. But eventually, he recognizes the boy being from the son of the lady above, whom he seems to be infatuated with, displaying a disgusting behavior, sniffing the food and subsequently the boy, seeing how he could not refuse food from her, making some suggestive remarks while sweating profusely and salivating, taking the food inside and saying, that he will savor every single bite. This man also looks like a monster, which represents how the innocent boy sees these people for who they truly are. Monstrous beings being a poor excuse for humans. The boy then continues on his task and goes to level 7, continuing on the seemingly easy task of giving out leftovers. Knocking on one of the doors, it sounds like the occupant is taking a shower as they don't open the door. Knocking on the door opposite, a serious man opens up, asking what the kid wants when he offers the leftover to him. The man appreciates the boy and instructs him to leave it outside as he's quite busy. As he leaves it outside, he notices the man leaving the door ajar, which intrigues his curiosity, giving the boy a chance to peek in or stop his urges. The boy subsequently goes to the lower floor, floor number 6. Knocking on the first door, a provocative woman opens the door, giggling while staring at the boy, getting too close for comfort, in a strange tone complimenting the boy to be adorable. As the boy hands over the leftover to this cryptic woman, she appreciates it and quickly invites the boy in to rest as he's been walking up and down the stairs. 
The boy uses his intuition and refuses this woman's request, who still persists that maybe he can another time, as after all, they are in the same building and opportunities are just next door. If the boy makes the mistake and accepts this predatory woman's invitation, she transforms into a monster, making remarks of what a supple skin he has and that she will be gentle. When after some time, the boy leaves her apartment, crying in silence. Knocking on the opposite door, no one opens, which makes the boy continue on going to the lower level, floor number 5. The first apartment on the left has a girl who bullies the boy at school, which makes him avoid it, as he doesn't want to get bullied again. The apartment opposite doesn't seem to have anyone in either, which makes the boy continue on going down. Level number 4 has a wide open door, which the boy avoids before knocking on the first door on the left. As no one opens, the boy carefully goes to the open door and calls out if anyone's home. He hears a faint cracking voice, someone approaching the door and saying that he can smell the food. Food. I smell food. A man having his face bandaged up crawls to the door and takes the food, then subsequently shuts his door. It seems as if he's some sort of survivor, sustaining heavy debilitating injuries, even losing his mobility. Going down to the third floor, no one opens the door which makes the boy go down to level number 2. The boy hears echoes of a small dog barking coming from the left apartment which he proceeds to knock on. A man opens the door and appreciates the boy for giving the food when he unveils an eerie fact that he was so hungry to the point that he was literally about to eat his own dog. He quickly dismisses what he was about to say and explains that he used to have a bag of food next to his door, which isn't there anymore, saying that the girl who resides in the building, the girl who bullies the boy at school, could have stolen it. This further shows how cruel and selfish people are in this cursed building, with almost no one having any compassion, or if they pretend to do, they have hidden ulterior motives. Knocking on the door opposite, an elderly man having his left arm dismembered, having it bandaged up as if it recently happened, opens the door, holding a knife in his right hand. The boy offers the food to the old man, who kindly refuses it and explains that he's not hungry. The man only has one wish, to chat instead of having food. The old man carries on explaining it's been a while since he had anyone to speak with as his wife recently passed away. He found her lifeless corpse with a knife stuck in her throat, which reveals that he possibly sustained his injuries from fighting off the perpetrator. The man continues on to ask the boy four mysterious questions, which have different consequences according to how the boy responds. The first question is if the boy thinks murdering an innocent person is wrong. The boy answers that he thinks so. The second question asks if the boy thinks anger is normal when someone hurts one's loved one, to which the boy answers yes. Subsequently, he asks if murderers should be punished, to which the boy answers yes as well. And finally, the man asks the boy a difficult question to whether if a loved one is the one committing the murder, deserves punishment or not, being someone specific like the boy's mother, to which he responds honestly, saying no. The old man calls the boy a hypocrite, but ultimately appreciates his honesty and lets him go. The boy being rightfully confused and not understanding the behavior of many of the neighbors continues on going to a lower level. Reaching floor number one, the first apartment seems to have no one in. The boy also notices a bag of dog food, which seems to belong to the man on floor number two, who had a dog having their bag of food stolen. Knocking on the last door, a kind and enthusiastic young woman opens the door, who appreciates the boy for passing care the food, thinking of a tradition how new neighbors are treated being given gifts and food. As she kindly chats with the boy, she notices the strange texture of the food being too slimy. As she bids the boy goodbye, closing the door, her screams in disgust and disbelief are heard, finding an eyeball in the food. <coughs> Going up to the fifth floor, the boy decides to knock on the door of the girl who bullies her at school, as he still has some leftover boxes. The girl having a violent and hostile expression opens the door, being much bigger than the boy, who gaslights him but ultimately takes the food from him, while showing complete disrespect to him and talking to him in a demeaning manner. 
The girl then confesses that she's the one who actually stole the dog food from the man on floor number two, revealing her sinister and psychotic plans of wanting his dog to starve to death. As the dog licked her in a playful manner, making her want to seek revenge seemingly because she probably hates compassion and kindness, or anything happy. The boy, having a kind soul and still being innocent compared to the horrible neighbors he encountered, he goes down to floor number one and picks up the dog food he found, believing it might belong to the man on the second floor. He proceeds to leave it by his door and knocks on the door, which makes the man come out and really appreciate it, saying something very strange that he's very grateful that he returned their food instead of saying he's dog food. And what's confusing is why he relies on one bag of food only and why he cannot afford it as dog food is already very cheap and why does he keep leaving it outside? Maybe the man has social anxiety or some sort of debilitating disorder stopping him from going out. It's still strange why he doesn't take it inside especially as the bully keeps stealing it. Maybe the food is for public use with others letting him have it. Let's just say his story is very ambiguous and unexplained. As the man shuts the door, the bully from upstairs observes this interaction, being very angry, telling the boy that he will regret doing this. With one leftover remaining, the boy goes to the 7th floor, trying his luck with the apartment where the resident was taking a shower. A tall beautiful woman with a dress stands at the door who recalls knowing the boy from level number 9. She appreciates having the leftover handed to her, which she eats, being surprised to how delicious it is. She explains that she needs to know the recipe, calling the boy's mother on the phone. The beautiful woman called Laura, talking to the boy's mother called Hilary, gives her thanks to her for the food and even compliments Hilary for being such a good wife to Kenneth, the boy's father. Hilary explains to Laura that Kenneth was a lucky man, which makes Laura think that Hilary found out about their affair with the boy's father, which makes her laugh uncontrollably, showing her selfish and proud character, taking pleasure in the knowledge their relationship is destroyed, laughing right in front of the boy's face, having no shame whatsoever. Hillary then explains that it's not what she meant and that the food Laura just consumed is the butchered corpse of Kenneth, with Hillary having had killed him. A man that cheated on her with Laura, with her giving his flesh to Laura, being an absolute payback. This news infuriates Laura, who orders the boy to wait right there, which scares the boy using his intuition and running back home. Just as he gets on his way, Laura having a kitchen knife in her hand, chases after the boy, wanting to kill both her and the mother, shouting that she will kill all of them. Almost reaching level 9 where his home is, unable to catch his breath, panting on Controllably, he encounters the cruel bully, having a monstrous deformed face with two eyeballs in her mouth, while her own eyes have changed into circular mouths lined with sharp teeth. This in a way portrays her true image, matching her ugly insides and character. Having had eaten human flesh, trying to close her eyes to the murder that is about to take place, with the crazed mistress wanting to kill the boy in cold blood. The boy manages to narrowly bypass the bully, running into his apartment, with the mother locking the door, holding a kitchen knife, commending the boy for giving out all of the leftovers, or in other words, getting rid of all the evidence that she killed Kenneth by feeding his part to the horrendous neighbors, using her innocent child as an accomplice in the murder. The mother then instructs the boy to go to his bed as she has some leftover business, intending to kill the mistress, Laura. The torn photographs on the wall also reveal how the mother had a rocky relationship with the father, who cheated on her with a proud and shameless Laura, who doesn't deny it and laughs in the boy and the mother's face, which led to Hillary killing him and chopping him into pieces. In some other endings, the boy can get stabbed by two people. The elderly man who has his left arm missing asks the boy a series of questions. If the boy refuses to chat with them, he threatens him with a knife he's holding to do so. At the end, when the old man asks the boy if he believes his mother should be punished for murdering someone, and if the boy answers yes, the elderly man becomes joyful and says that he's still innocent and all is not lost. He takes the boy to his house and tells him that he shouldn't worry about his mother anymore, as he will take care of her. 
This portrays that the wife of the old man was possibly killed by Hillary, the boy's mother, as the elderly man seems to have a grudge against her. He asked the specific questions as in fact Hillary was someone who killed someone innocent, the man's wife, and that's why he asked the boy these strange questions to analyze his point of view and if he's affected by her in any way. As he finds out the boy is still innocent and doesn't know, believing in justice for the innocent, he shelters the boy and protects him against his psychotic mother. This conversation, however, could also go sideways, as if the boy responds to one of the questions saying that he doesn't believe murdering someone innocent is wrong. The elderly man mentions that the son of the devil is finally upon his door when he repeatedly stabs him to death. This shows how the man wanted to check the boy's innocence and possibly has been planning to kill Hillary for a while, knowing full well what she had done. Maybe that's why he also refused to take the leftover, knowing exactly what she's capable of and what she had done before. The second person who kills the boy is Laura, who stabs him repeatedly to death if he doesn't run back home when Laura becomes infuriated. As the boy slowly loses his consciousness, Laura mentions he got what he deserved for tricking her into eating her love affair's flesh, something that the boy was completely unaware of. The bad ending is achieved if the boy runs back home four times after being scared by the neighbors. The compassionate mother who at first was encouraging reveals her true nature of being cruel and using her child as a tool to further her cause and hide the evidence of her murder. Contradicting herself of telling her son to avoid strangers, throwing him into the belly of predators, killers, psychopaths, and stalkers. She becomes quickly agitated and terrifying, belittling her son and insulting him. She then transforms into her monstrous face, something that the boy sees as his imaginative child mind portrays how people treat him visually. The mother manipulatively gaslights the little boy, telling him to quickly go to his room before the mother shows him true terror, seemingly involving her, killing him. This game showed how horrible majority of the neighbors were, all being selfish and not considering the little innocent boy. Even the elderly man who preached justice at the end only wanted his way, as if the boy disagreed with him, he would stab him to death. It just shows the horror this innocent boy had to face, being tormented for the crimes of others and their inner demons, being bullied by a bully, seen guilty by a man who had his wife killed by his mother, killed by his father's mistress, and possibly killed, tormented, and gaslit by his own mother, and also taken advantage of by a predatory woman, and much more. The neighbors all accepted the food and enjoyed it, portraying what monsters they truly are. All except the old man, who refused it, and the new young kind neighbor, who pointed out that it's slimy. The only one who seemed to notice that something is off with the food. The bully even has two eyeballs in her mouth, with her eyes missing, portraying how she intentionally closes her eyes on cruelty, bullying others and making them miserable. Also, the mother in fact shows how she cared little about her son, with her vengeance being more important, exposing her innocent boy to the atrocious neighbors, getting him involved in passing around his father's body parts in leftover boxes to unknowing neighbors. <sighs> what a freaking heavy game. I could go on in more detail how traumatizing and nightmare fueled this game is, but I'll leave that for you folks to discuss more in the comments below. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one.